Okay. Enjoy. Hello, nice to meet you. My name's Elliot. How old are you? How old are you? 11. 11. 12. So I was sitting in the same position as you about 12 years ago. Now, about nine years after that, graduated as an osteopath and I set up a clinic on Windmill Street. And there we treat injuries. We talk to people about how to eat healthily, as healthily as possible. Tell them how to lose weight, gain weight, increase their physical exercise. And as well as that, we deliver healthy snacks by iMunch. So if ever you want to find out a little bit more about what we do, just go to www.imunchsnacks.com. Now my task today is to teach you guys about healthy eating in as entertaining a way as possible. Now the reason why it would be beneficial for me to talk to you about this, I mean, because anyone got any ideas about what's happening to the Western world at the moment when it comes to eating and exercise? Is it getting better yet? Yes, getting worse. Get a lot worse, that's it. So today we're probably eating the worst that we've eaten ever before and probably exercising as little as, the ever, as we ever have done before. Now the beginning of why this is happening actually occurs in Ethiopia 200,000 years ago. Has anyone got an idea as to why that might be? Yeah? No, not quite. Yeah? Any ideas? Does anyone know what everyone in this room has in common with Ethiopia? No? Okay. Human beings originated from Ethiopia, or that area, northeast Africa, about 200,000 years ago. That's where the oldest human skeleton was found. From there, human beings went through Africa, out of Africa, into Europe, and into Asia. Now, I want you to imagine that there's two people in Ethiopia 200,000 years ago. Person A and person B. So we'll call them Andrew and Bob. Now, Andrew and Bob come across a beehive. Now, Andrew says, they're both almost dying of starvation. Andrew says, oh, I'm starving, but I really don't want to go into that beehive and get some of those bees. Now, Bob, on the other hand, looks at that beehive and his mouth's watering. He can't wait to get that beehive to eat all of that honey because he's just so hungry. And he's got a voice in his head, and that voice in his head is saying, I must, I just need to get to that beehive because I'm dying of starvation. Who do you think in that situation is going to survive? Person A, who can't really be bothered to get to go to the beehive, or person B, who is just dying to get to that beehive? Yes? Person B, exactly. So here we have the need for sugar, salt and fat, which originated about 200,000 years ago when human beings uh, evolved, probably due to some kind of famine, all right? Now, so we've got these cravings for sugar, salt and fat. Now what happens after that is we start to develop agriculture and we have farmlands. Now say if we have this voice in Bob's head, and we're gonna say that this voice in Bob's head I'm going to call it a chimp. Right? So this is a chimp on his shoulder, and you're saying that you really need to eat sugar, salt, and fat. You need it. Now, when it comes to our ability to farm, so say 100,000 years later, we can farm now, do we still need that chimp sitting on our shoulders? No. Why don't we need it? Yeah? Exactly. We have enough food now. Now, what happens after this is, let's speed up to, say, 1940s. Do anything? Do anyone know what happened? Which is pretty, pretty significant. Well, uh, almost said it. What happened in the nineteen forties? Yeah. World War Two. Now, after World War Two, I mean, you probably be able to tell me the change in dynamics as to our relationship with food. Uh, whose grandparents here were alive during World War Two? Okay. Now, can anyone tell me the first thing that your grandparents bring round when they come to visit? Yeah, someone said it. Yeah? Sugar. Sugar, yeah. So what, what, would that, what would that be in? What kind of form? Yeah? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. They like to bring around chocolate. Now, the reason why this might be is because during World War II, there's something called rationing. Okay? So you couldn't get those nice things, which means that when your grandparents come around, they want to give you all the nice things that they didn't have. And also after World War II, um, food production had to speed up a hell of a lot. So... Um, you had intensive farming, you had uh, like battery, battery hens and things like that to try and speed up the amount of food they could produce during that time. So then it brings us to modern day.
but we're not hunter gatherers anymore. But we still have the chimp, and we still have a lot of food. So what does this lead us to do? Can anyone give any examples? Yeah. That's it. That's it. And you guys might be able to tell me when you've been in a situation where the chimp in your head is saying you really need to get some sugar in you, or you look at a chocolate bar, or you look at a big piece of cake, and you might have you know, that rational part of your mind, that intelligent part of your mind, which is saying, do you know what, you probably don't actually need that, but the chimp's saying, no, you really, really do. Okay, now what I need to tell you now is how this can start to affect your, your, your physiology. All right, so just to recap, modern day, we're inclined not to exercise as much, and we're inclined to eat more sugar, fat, and salt. Okay, does anyone know what happens when you start to eat salt? Or, yeah? Yeah, you get really thirsty, so you start to drink more. That's it, you could do. Now, what happens when you start to take in salt is it actually starts to change the way your blood works. If you take salt into your blood, water rushes into your blood at the same time. Now, this causes a relative dehydration of your tissues. That means that from your body's perspective, your tissues are dehydrated, even though your blood isn't. All right, now, that, what that can do is cause your blood to slow because of the amount of water rushing in, but as well as that, it can start to change how your body tissues are actually working. Now, does anyone know what happens if you eat sugar? Yeah? Uh, it makes you, um, it makes, it makes you quite energetic and then it slows you down. That's it. Now, the reason why that is, is because when you take in sugar, just to put this into perspective, uh, how many of you guys have, say, like a 500 milliliter bottle of Coke a day? Anyone? If not, that's good. Yeah, have 500 milliliter bottle of Coke. Okay. Now, if you were to have two of those, which a lot of kids unfortunately do, guess how long it would take person A and person B to consume that much sugar? It would take them about 15 foot of sugar cane to consume that amount of sugar. Now, if anyone's ever eaten sugar cane before, you know that it's pretty hard to get through 15 foot of it. It would take you at least two days. But now, we can consume that much sugar in the space of about five to ten minutes. So you take sugar into your body, always does it spike your sugar levels, which is why you get quite energetic for a brief period of time, and then all of a sudden your blood sugar levels drop to below what they were before you had the sugar because insulin levels start to spike. Now this causes the tiredness and the fatigue that you get after the initial sugar hit, and what happens after that? What do you feel like you need? What's the chimp telling you to do? Yeah? yeah. Drink more sugar, exactly. And unfortunately what happens is when you start to take more and more sugar into your bloodstream, it starts to lay down quite thickly around your arteries and that can cause blockages. Um, it can cause a devascularization of tissues which is where your tissues don't get enough blood. You know, if you're diabetic that means you start to get pins and needles, it starts to mean that your sports performance reduces, you start to get out of breath walking up and down stairs for example and if, unfortunately if one of those blockages breaks off then that can lead to something like a stroke, which is something that could occur later in life. The same thing happens with fat. Uh, if you were to eat too much fat, the fat starts to lay down in your arteries, that can break loose, and then that can, can give you a stroke. All right. Now, that's all the, the gruesome stuff I've been done with. What I'd like to do now is tell you as to how you can avoid these types of things. Right, but I want to make it as interactive as possible. So if you can put your hands up if you ask any if you if you want to ask any questions, I'll be asking you quite a few quite a few questions anyway. Okay. Now can let's okay, let's uh let's have it again. We've got this side of the room and this side of the room. What I want you to do is compete each other compete against each other for points. Alright now if I ask this side of the room first, can you give me an example of a healthy breakfast? Yep. Porridge and fruit, that sounds pretty good. And has anyone else got an example over here for an example of a healthy breakfast? Yeah. Um, oatmeal. Oatmeal, that's good. So it's, well, it's the same thing, good stuff. And now, can someone give me an example of a healthy lunch? Yeah. Um, a sandwich with salmon and uh, a small baby beans. Yeah. And then with uh, a, um, some fruit and then uh, a little. A 
Oh, you lost the point of the chocolate bar. <laughs> Can someone else give me a, a good example? Yeah. Um, a sandwich yeah. with maybe like some lettuce and tomato. Yeah. And a bit of chicken. Yeah, sounds like good. Chicken slice. Yeah. And that's like. Well. That's it. And then you can have maybe like a drink of water. Yeah. As well. Yes, and um, maybe like an apple. Yeah, perfect. Good stuff. Just out of interest, why did you say the chocolate bar? Um, so you can have a bit of fat. Okay, so, so you're right, fat is healthy, but it has to come from a healthy source. So generally, when you're looking at healthy fats, you're looking at something which looks very natural. Now, a good rule of thumb to go by is something that looks like it could have been dug up with a stick or killed with a stick. So, does a chocolate bar look like it could have been dug up with a stick? No. Does an avocado look like it could have been dug up with a stick? Yeah. Yeah, because that's a healthy form of fat. Um, an egg, does that look very natural? Yeah. yeah. so that's another healthy form of fat. Even something like olive oil, something which actually has been pressed from an olive, that's another healthy form of fat. As soon as something starts to become quite processed, especially if it's combined with sugar, that's when the chimp starts kicking on our shoulders and says, you really need that, but a lot of the time, you don't. Okay, and now, so what we've got, two, one? Okay, so this side again. Can someone give me an example of a healthy dinner? Oh, no one wants to put their hand up now. Uh. <laughs> healthy dinner? <laughs> Yes, the yeah. You have like fish. Yep. Salad. With like a. Yeah, sounds good. Two points. I'll give you a bonus point if you tell me the benefit of fish. Yeah, and look for something else. Give you a clue. Brains. Brains. What? Yeah. So it will kind of say yeah, it. It has omega three in it, which is really good for your your nervous system. All right. So we've got three, two. Help you dinner, please. Um, you can have um, fish. Yeah, like you're just coffee. <laughs> yeah. Um, with a bit of lemon. Yeah. And, and you can have like rice. Yeah. Like a, 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 a bit of curry. Sounds well. good. <laughs> and you can have like a, maybe a, a starter quiche. Good. That sounds good. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> kind of not always lost the point of the quiche, yeah. but I'll give you a bonus point if you can tell me the benefit of rice. I'll give you, yeah, go on, go on. No, no, you're going in the right direction. Yeah, because it, it's a carbohydrate, it fills you up, uh, but it doesn't fill it up in the fatty way, so it, 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 fills, it fills you up for a, a, long, a long, yeah, long period. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, when we talked about when you eat sugar, your sugar levels spike and then they go down quite quickly good thing about rice, um, potato, um, especially sweet potato, is they tend to keep your blood sugar levels quite stable, which means that you don't get the chimp on your shoulder telling you that you need to eat a lot more of it. Okay. Good. Now, so we've got three, three? Yeah. Four. Four. Okay. All right. Cause, oh, that's her too. Thank you. Now, we're going to go into the, the exercise stage. So, can you guys tell me how much exercise should be doing on a day-to-day basis? Uh, who have we had? Yes. At least 30 minutes. At least 30 minutes, yeah. 30, 30 minutes of intense or an hour of steady. Yeah, good stuff. Can you guys give me an example of steady versus intense exercise? Um, steady being uh, maybe walking. Yeah, good. And intense rugby or football or something like that. Yeah, perfect, good stuff. Good stuff. Sprinting, any, anything that involves your heart rate <coughs> racing quite high. All right, good stuff, son. What's next? Five rules. Now, what I need to do is, is talk to you guys now about the kind of potholes that you're most likely to fall into. Can you put your hands up if you're playing sport at the moment, please? At least, at least once a week. Good, because you probably play sport during your lessons. All right? Yeah, okay. Apart from the six formers, which is actually quite typical. So if you'd like to put your hands down now. So, it is unfortunate that most of you, by the time you get to 17, 18, will drastically reduce the amount of exercise that you do. Okay. Now, there's a problem with this. You guys are working hard during your education to make sure that you go on, go to a good university, you get um, 
good university qualification, you need to get a really good job. Okay. But how valuable is that job going to be if you can't really enjoy the uh, money that you reap from it? It's not going to be very enjoyable at all, is it? So you need to make sure, first of all, that you keep your sports alive, that you keep your sportsmanship alive. So you need to make sure that wherever sport you take to now, you keep that up. And make sure it's just it's just a hobby, or right? it's just something that you want to get good at. Because you need to make sure that not only do you progress your minds, but you also progress your body as much as possible. And if you're playing basketball at this point, you go on to football when you're 18, that's fine, but you just need to keep on being active, as active as possible. Who stops off at the corner shop before you get to school? Okay. Uh, what do you get at the corner shop? Okay, is that the chimp or is that the intelligent one? Chimp, okay. What do you get? What do you get? What type of drink? Looks like, is that the chimp or is that intelligent one? Yeah. Chimp, okay. What do, what do you eat? Oh, is that the chimp or the intelligent one? Yeah. I'll get two more. What's yours? Good. Is that the chimp or the intelligent one? Yeah. Intelligent one, good. Uh, what do you get, Luke? <laughs> so, like, maybe a Wednesday, get a rock star drink. Yeah. Chocolate bar. Is that the chip telling? Is that the chip telling him to do that? Or was that the intelligent one? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> is that the so sugar, caffeine, and fat. Sugar, caffeine, and fat. Is that the intelligent one or the chip? The chip. And there was one more over here. Yep. Yeah. An iced tea. Oh, I'd be tempted to see how much sugar's in that iced tea. Say, say if it is a very good, healthy iced tea with no added sugar, what would that be? The chimp or the intelligent one? Yes, that's it, yeah, very good. So the trick is, to, when you're looking at the food that you eat, try and decide whether it's an intelligent decision or whether it's an impulsive decision, whether it's something that you're doing just because you feel like you want it. Make sure that whatever you're putting into your bodies, most of the time, is something which is actually going to benefit your body. Um, for most of you, unless you're extremely, extremely, extremely highly performing athletes, putting sugar into your body is not going to be a good thing at all. all right. Put your hands up if you skip breakfast. Okay, now let me run. I see you put your hands up. Now let me run through the scenario with you. Okay, because skipping breakfast isn't actually bad, it's the repercussions that come after it. So imagine the, the chimp, and at the moment it's pretty silent, you've just woken up. Alright, so chimp's not really telling you to do much. Now you start to get really, really hungry because you haven't eaten breakfast. Ha is that chimp going to be talking louder or is it going to be talking quiet, quieter? Mm -hmm. Louder, exactly. So that chimp is actually going to be telling you more so to eat all the bad stuff and as much as you can of it. Alright, good stuff. Uh, let's have a few more questions before I go. How long are you guys waiting? Who waits more than four hours? between their lunch, no, let's say, who waits more than six hours between their lunch and their next meal? So that would be one o'clock until seven o'clock. Okay, yeah, all right, good stuff. So once again, <laughs> so once, once again, is the chimp after seven hours gonna be talking quieter or louder? Louder, that's it. So the trick is not to, when, when people say to eat often, regular and often, it's not because it has a beneficial effect on your metabolism, it's because it stops you from overindulging when it comes to the next meal. So it stops you eating your next course and a packet of crisps and then a chocolate bar. Okay. Now, you guys, for the most, are going to be able to get away with really eating what you want at this stage. And that, for a lot of you, might be the downfall. Because if you can develop, develop unhealthy habits at this stage and then you carry them on until you're 18 and your metabolism starts to slow down, you stop, you stop doing as much exercise, then you'll get to 18 to 24, like, like myself and a lot of my friends uh, have gone through where you start to put on weight a lot easier, you start to have quite serious health repercussions as well when it gets to later on into your life. All right. Has anyone got any questions for me today? Just anything about your sport, health, fitness, anything like that? Yes? <coughs> Sorry, say that again? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, for, for for you guys at your age, you can you can really go as much as you want. Just make sure that you keep a balance between your schoolwork, your sleep, and your exercise. Now, the I'll, I'll tell you what the symptoms of overtraining are, just in case at some point you do ever go into that. The symptoms are when you do come to play sport, you won't be able to perform as well. So you'll be slower. You'll feel less coordinated. You'll feel slightly lethargic. Your concentration levels will go down at school and when you're playing sport, and as well as that, your sleep will suffer. Um, you might experience weight, extreme weight loss or weight gain as well, or significant weight loss or weight weight gain as well. All right, but you, you should be you should be fine. One hundred percent, you'll be fine for now. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. Um, sorry. Who, who's that? Oh, you were first, weren't you? Yeah. Adrenaline isn't a bad hormone. It's a good hormone. So, for example, if you're at the start of 100 meter line and you're, you're getting ready to getting ready to sprint, um, it's a good hormone. Sometimes, even if you're you know about to prepare your exam, you're, you're about to sit your exam, you might notice that during an exam, if you're a bit stressed, your mind thinks quite a bit quicker. Um, once again, before you go onto the rugby pitch, it's, it's a good hormone because it starts to increase the speed that nerves fire. Uh, it starts to increase how hard your muscles can contract and how powerful you are. So it's a good hormone temporarily. Now, when you have stress, so adrenaline, for a long time, that can then start to uh, cause another hormone called cortisol to start to be released. Now, the problem with cortisol is it chronically, so long term, it puts all long term projects on hold because cortisol is a stress hormone. It's assuming that you're under stress, therefore things like building muscle, um, um, settling down and, and having kids, uh, eating, it's all on the back burner. You don't want to do that. So what cortisol does is it slows down the rate that you recover. It um, can uh, have an effect on nerve impulses, so that's how your performance can start to reduce. And as well as that, cortisol starts to cause you to gain weight um, centrally, so around your organs, and that's because you're saying I'm under a stressful situation, I need as much fat centrally as I can uh, to try and survive for as long as possible, but as well as that, I'm going to eat away at all the muscle tissue around my body to make sure that I've got enough energy to carry on. Alright, any other questions? Good stuff. Alright, well I hope you all enjoyed what I had to say today. Um, like I said, if you need any further advice, if you need to ask any questions, we're very active on social media, so all you've got to do is, is type in Revitalize Health and Fitness Clinic on, on any um, social media platform, and as well as that, you can uh, just type in I Munch Snacks on social media or go to imunchsnacks.com and I'll be happy to help you. Alright, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.